finances. Uh, yeah. What did you think of Alex Rodriguez's CNBC episode with you? Now that it's over and everything, I don't have anything to hide. Like, I didn't like it. Like, the perception that he portrayed to my wife was completely wrong. We were looking at cars because we want, had a trade in her car for the show, whatever, and to cut down our expenses. And um, they made her say, like, oh, this is, no, like, being like, no, this is not, I would never drive this. And that's not her, and it portrayed her as being this superficial person. And that's not her at all. And I was really hurt about that part because I have to protect my family, and I was pissed off about that. I was like, this is bullshit. Like, what are they doing? But there's some things that did help. Like, you know, d doing, um, um, uh, like, apologies, um, you know, like, to my teammates, to... Uh, some people like that, that, I mean, that helped me out because I don't know if I would have the courage to do that. Um, but, you know, at the end of the show, he got me this big deal for this uh, company called Fit Plan, but I haven't been paid from them. I was supposed to be getting paid like monthly, but I only been paid three times. And that, that deal started in November of last year. What did they say? When they just say, the um, um, they say, so it's not fair for us to pay you all this money if you don't get all these subscribers. I just recently reached out even like a month ago to Alex being like, dude, I know you got me like your show is back in the game. There's a good and bad things that happen out of this, but back in the game, like I'm not really back in the game. Like I'm still back at where I started before the show started. Like, so what did you really, like, are you going to try to get me another deal or what? And, like, haven't heard anything from them. When the sponsors dropped post-Rio, um, collectively, uh, how much money do you think went away? Millions. I, can, I, can't, I can't put a number on it, just a I lot. Said, I saw money. somewhere maybe, like, five, five to ten. Uh, I was projected to go that way, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, how did it affect you? I mean, every sponsor that I had, and I was supposed to collect all these bonuses because of me getting another medal, everyone just dropped me. So I just lost out on so much money. And the negative effect that it had afterwards, I couldn't get any... N new sponsors. How much of getting in that trouble was because of sponsors dropping and how much was because of just spending beyond your means predating that? Um, well, predating Rio and everything, it was, I was the type of person, because I loved seeing everyone happy. I love seeing that. And so like, if I go out to a bar, I will buy probably everyone in the bar a shot or something or a drink. Just because when I give it to them, that, that one little moment of them smiling being like wow like thanks that makes me happy and that's why I, w I would do all these things how hard was selling the shoe collection uh, we're still trying to do that now i mean i still have boxes and boxes in the storage of shoes that are worth like fifteen hundred dollars and i have like two hundred <laughs> so it's like why and it's just stupid things that I was doing. What do you think you learned from going through the financial challenges? Um, just on how stupid I am about my financials, like, and how careless I am. Like, I never really looked at it. I never cared to, because I just knew at that time, money was just always coming in. And now that I have a family of my own, it's like, a big slap on my, uh, across my face is like, I could have had all this money saved up and everything for my kids and everything, but I was just careless. We're doing better, way better than I was. Um, but yeah, it's just like, we're still learning. All right, you talked about being a people pleaser and uh, obviously there's positives and negatives uh, mm -hmm. of, of that, but the, the reality show that you did, and then the subsequent lawsuit to get out of it. 
what can you tell about just kind of going through that experience? Uh, I mean, the reality TV show that I did um, isn't reality. It wasn't reality at all. Um, it was scripted. Like if we did a scene with me and my family or anything, they'd be like, all right, Ryan, so let's, let's do this again, but you say it this way. But I was like, that, I wouldn't really say it that way. But I hadn't. I was like a deer in the headlight. Like I was like, okay. And so the show portrayed me as like just some person that I'm not. I can't say it was horrible because I did get to meet Little Wayne because of it. <laughs> so I thought that was the best thing ever. <laughs> and I mean, I guess you could say at the end of the day, like, like later on in life, being like, oh, so. I can say I had my own reality TV show. I guess that's a checklist, I guess. I don't know. How <laughs> difficult was getting out of it? Because, you know, maybe you wanted to get out of it for the right reasons, and people that you worked with might have wanted to keep you in it for yeah. their own motivations. Yeah, I mean, it was my agent at the time. I wanted to part ways because. I was going, I didn't like the way I, like my image was going and I wanted to leave and apparently I just listened instead of actually reading a contract or anything. I just listened being what was said about it and it wasn't true and said like, oh, you're stuck with me, blah, blah, blah. And so we went, got sued, but we had a settlement for a lot of money. So like for, for another four years or three, year, three or four years, she was collecting money and I never even saw her.